In this video I want to talk about space. Space is an incredibly important thing to be familiar with when working with rigging and items within layout, as it's within space that everything gets quantified and it has values and coordinates and so on and so forth. Oddly enough, it may seem, I'm starting out in Modeler here, because the first space that we want to be familiar with is object space. Obviously, we build our objects in Modeler and we bring them into Layout. And of course, many of the things that we add into Layout, whether those are nulls or bones or cameras or lights, behave in much the same way as an object that has been brought in would. They are all just items. Now, of course, here in Modeler, we see that we have, you know, the grid layout of things. Um, there is a world, um, as it were. And these axes that we have, the X, Y, and Z axes, are the object's local space. When the object gets, you know, spun round or turned into different places, its space is not changing, and we'll see how that works in layout shortly. It is essentially this modeler world that is the object's own local space. So, here in layout, we have just a null, and we can see on it the arrows here that point in its different directions. Now this null, as it stands, is currently a scene child, it has no parent, and so it is in the root space, or the scene space, or the world space, as it's most commonly referred to, which is the base space underneath everything else in layout. Now, what we see when we are talking about items, objects, etc., is that items have their own local space, which we can represent thusly as a set of grids that exist on the object itself. Here we can see that these grids are all in line with the world space. They're no different because this object is just sat at base, at origin, 0, 0, 0, no rotation, and so on. But of course, when this item is moved, it takes its local space with it. It has a position in world space, as we can see marked out here, down in the little readout box, but it also has its own local space, and that comes along with it. The same is true when we rotate it, as we can see. The local space of the item goes with the item itself. If we switch back here to the translate tool and come about a bit, so as we can see the handles, we see that they are no longer aligned with these grids. We can make that a little more obvious there. But notice, of course, the axes settings that we have here. If I switch to local axes, we can see, once again, that the handles are aligning with the local space of the item. World axes and parent axes here appear identical. The reason, of course, being because this is a seen child, so its parent is the world. So, let's take a slightly closer look at these precise definitions here with a second null. So I've got a second null there, which I can parent to the first one, and I'm just going to move it somewhere um, within, of course, this first null's local space. And that's the thing. We saw, of course, in the last video, parenting and hierarchies, how it is that when objects are parented together, a child will move along with its parent. The reason why? Because it is in its parent's space. In the same way that this first null here is moving around on the grid of the world space, this second one is moving in the local space of its parent or rather in its parent space. As we see with parent axis mode selected here, when I rotate this first null, the axis handles do not align with its own local space, but these ones on this second null do. The reason? Because we are manipulating it within its parent space. In this case, the local axes are no different, because, at present, this second null has not been rotated. It is still at 0, 0, 0, even though, quite obviously, its parent item is not so. If we come back to our second null and we go to world axis mode, then we get handles which are aligned to the world axis, of course, or the world space, and our item can be moved around along those lines. What this demonstrates to us is that it's not simply 
lists of items which are hierarchical, the space from one to the next is also hierarchical. So this second null is in its parent space. If we just set it to zero there and move it out only on the Z, then were we to look at it from top view, it appears to be out on the X and the Z, and of course from the side it appears to be up on the Y in terms of the world position or the world axis, but by its value it is at zero on X and Y and only has a value here on Z. Now this is important to consider because when values are recorded in Lightwave, most specifically of course, in your graph editor and you have keyframes with values on them, these values are always in parent space. You cannot convert them to some other space, you cannot use them in some other space. It is always parent space. And of course, when it comes to rigging, this is important so that your items will wind up in the correct position relative to the correct item, be that their parent, their child, or some item that's part of a totally different unconnected hierarchy. So, as we can see, space is relative from parent to child in a hierarchical fashion in both position and rotation. Once again, remember this null, this second item here, is not currently rotated. It is at zero, zero, zero in terms of rotation. This also goes for scaling, which is important to note. Let us just take it here and put it at one meter on the Z. Now let us take its parent item and scale that down. What do we notice with the child null here? Well, in position, it is still at one meter. If we look in the top view here, you can see that my grid is currently set to one meter. So this point here to that point there is one meter's distance. This is clearly not one meter out. Let me reset the rotation here of the parent. We can see that this is clearly not one meter in front of its parent, but it has a value of one meter on its Z axis. The reason is because when we scaled the parent, we also scaled its space. An object's and item's own internal local space always goes along with it. And any items that exist as children of an object are always in that object's local space. Becoming familiar with this hierarchical nature of space that's used in, well, not just Lightwave, but 3D graphics as a whole, is extremely important. So as when you are rigging things, they will actually line up in the correct ways. And when you are plugging the value from one item into another item, you will get the right values passing through. If you don't, then you wind up with essentially errors of scale or errors of placement. And this causes misbehaviors in your rigs and all sorts of other issues and problems. Some examples of which we will see as we go along. It is also why, given the way that the coordinates for things are always recorded in parent space, that taking objects and rotating them, say, in local axis mode or world axis mode can present problems in certain situations, mainly during animation. And we will come to these problems as they become apparent. The other thing to be aware of with this spatial inheritance is that it is not necessarily overall, it is also axial. That's to say that the spaces inherit on a per axis basis. Now, of course, when something is parented to another thing, then it is in the parent space for all axis in translation, rotation, and scale. But this is especially important in scale as we have just looked at it. For instance, let's take my parent null here, and I'm going to scale it basically on one axis more than the others. Okay, so it is stretched out. Now, of course, this has stretched the child item as well as we would expect it to. But now, watch what happens when we rotate the child item. You can see that the item shears in this fashion. It doesn't stay stretched the same way locally itself, because the parent space has been stretched out 
on this one axis. And that axis, of course, goes with the parent, not with the child. Hence, when the child is rotated within this parent space that has been stretched on one axis, the stretch is always maintained on that same parent axis. This will come in incredibly important later when we're doing squash and stretch effects and things of the like. So it's very much something to keep an eye on. The important thing to take away here are the lessons of hierarchy from the previous video and the lessons of space from this one and how the two are quintessentially linked and inseparably linked as well. Space is hierarchical and you must always know what space you are working in and how that space is oriented in order to get the correct results from the top of a hierarchical chain down to the bottom of a hierarchical chain, which essentially is what a rig is, a series of hierarchies with coordinates on each item. So keep these things in mind as we move forward. They will become very, very important.